Hey, hey all, welcome to Forest County Outback. Uh, this is like the 20th take I've done on this intro. I really should do a blooper reel, I guess. Anyhow, this is number four, History Out Your Back Door. Now, I realize that I skipped over three. It just, it wasn't ready. I'm trying to keep the same number sequence as my original Facebook videos. So we'll get back to it. Anyhow, like I said, this is History Out Your Back Door. Uh, originally, I published it in April of 2020. And what I did is I just walked around my farm and, and within areas, within walking distance, looking for little pieces of history. And that's what it is. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, like, subscribe, comment, and um, yeah. Oh, see you later. Hi, this is Terry, and this is the fourth episode of Forest County Outback. And today I want to do something different. Uh, last, the first three, we went to Kellerville, Braceville, and the Furnace. Places that had... Uh, you know, some pretty well-known history and, and significant ruins and that. But one of the neat things about Forest County is that it is not in bulldoze flat, subdivided and paved over. So you can still find a lot of history, um, sometimes in your front yard, which is what we're going to do today. And we're call, actually calling this uh, History at Your Front Door. And what we're going to do is look around uh, the farm where I live and talk a bit about the history of that and some of the stuff that was there and then uh, go back in the woods and I'm going to show you some stuff back here that's really within walking distance. So you know, you, you don't have to go trekking uh, out through the boonies to find stuff. A lot of times it's, it's right, right in your front yard. Okay, so we are in uh, Wick Hill Townline area, and this is our little 50 acres of uh, paradise here. And there used to be a farming community back here. One of my neighbors, who's I think 95 this year, told me that he can remember when he was a kid that there were 26 farms between here uh, and Kellaville. And so uh, they don't pay attention to the junk there because sawmills are always junky. But this used to be part of the, cra uh, not the crap, the Emmert farm. And Emmert's daughter married a craft and they bought or were given uh, this 50 acres, which then became the craft farm. And that house right there was the, when we came, was the only building that was here, everything else I, I built. And that house kind of has an interesting history of its own. Um, one thing up here, down over the hill that way, we own down, we border on Collins Pine property. And when we moved here, there was a uh, section of virgin timber down there, right along the property line. And uh, what we were told was that back in the day, when they did the original surveys, they weren't real accurate. And a lot of times they weren't exactly sure where the lines were. So they would leave a buffer zone when they were logging. And um, so that survived until 1987. And then uh, Collins Pine came in and, <clears throat> well, the surveys are more accurate now. And they came in and they logged right up to the line. Okay, this house, as I said, it was the uh, only building here when we came. There had been a barn and there were some hand-hewn timbers laying around. But this house, the, the original house burned in the 1920s. 
and this house originally sat about a half a mile out the road and it was a one story and uh, these, these two brothers put it on skids pulled it back here with a tractor I don't know it's the late 30s 1940 or so and they built a second story and the bump out there that's the living room and um, but then the porch there came from uh, the original Emmert house and when that house was torn down they cut that porch off and, br and brought it down here and attached it and it explains a lot about this house because the porch is really well built the rest of the house is just just a cobbled together mess and uh, after the crafts sold it went through a couple owners and it was a it was a camp for several years it was the uh, Friendship hunting and fishing camp. Um, uh, some people from Aliquippa. And actually, some of them have stopped by. One of them last year, people who used to come here, and uh, they all seem to have fond memories of it. And uh, most of them are actually, they're surprised that the house is still here. So apparently, even back then, they, they knew the thing was like a, was like a disaster. Okay, this area right here, we're across the road from the house. Yeah, you can see typical, typical redneck uh, place here, and a lot of a lot of uh, junk vehicles. But over here, there there was a blacksmith shop, and um, one of the uh, actually it was one of the brothers who moved the house told me a lot about this place, and he said the bellows sat here for years after they tore the. Uh, blacksmith shot down but I uh, made a feeble attempt at one time to uh, hobby farm this place and when I plowed this up there were fire brick and charcoal and and coal and uh, some chunks of metal and stuff in here and it was also uh, you could uh, see the outline of the building they had a foundation it was just field stone I laid and there were actually a couple other buildings uh, that I've turned up uh, when I was plowing you know just you could see the foundation and, and in this area down here used to be pasture and we found some stuff down in there um, there's an old was an old bottle dump down there we got we picked up some neat bottles down there and, uh, one time our place is open to hunting and one time, this is why I'm kind of touchy about taking artifacts. Uh, I ran into a couple guys, and during hunting season, I was talking to them. And one guy, he he had something in his hand, was trying to hide it. And uh, finally, I asked him, I said, "What do you got there?" And he bore first thing he bore out is, "I didn't find it on your property." <clears throat> Which, yeah, right, dude. But what it was was a cowbell, and uh, it was it was a really nice one. It was a cast one. And uh, it kind of kind of aggravates me that I mean you know somebody picked that up and walked off with it when it wasn't wasn't his property and uh, so yeah I'm kind of touchy about picking up stuff if it's not if it's not on your property. Uh, a couple other things down there is remnants of an apple orchard down in there too, and I did find a uh, hub from a wagon wheel still had part of the spokes in it down in there that was that was kind of that was kind of interesting so anyhow we're out now at the town wine church which has been here oh i don't know when this building was built it's been it's been here quite some time but the main thing here is we want to look at the uh um, at the cemetery because those people connected with our farm are uh, are buried out here but uh, this church has been here since the 1800s I'm not sure how long but uh, actually my son got married here so that's kind of a 
kind of it's kind of a special for us so this is the town line cemetery and uh yeah, if you're familiar with uh, with uh, well history and the farms and that, or the names and that around here, um, they're all here. Uh, the Pearsons, McDonald's, Brex, Shunks, the Babs. Um, see, there's some wolves here somewhere, and these are all names that that are. Uh, tied into this, the history of this area. But here um, is the Emmerts. Here a couple Emmerts here and then the Crafts beyond there. Uh, Stovers. You know, you know, a lot of the names um, that were part of this, uh, part of this place. Okay, we're back in the woods behind uh, behind my house, and this is a uh, this is a railroad grade, and uh, this this railroad ran from um, Endeavor up over the mountaintop and down into Ross Run. And if you're wondering why there's so many railroad grades out through the woods, back in it was because back in the late 1800s, till the virgin timber was logged off in the 20s and 30s, uh, railroads were how they got the timber out. So every little hollow it seemed had a uh, railroad grade going up, and you'll find these everywhere. This actually was a main line. It was used for about 40 years until the logging was done, but these little spurs would be, um, you know, they'd just be used until they got the timber out of that particular hollow or that. And this was a switchback coming off the mountain, coming off the summit of the mountain. It came down here and there was, it was a switchback. You can see to the right, that was the one coming from the summit, coming from uphill, and it came down here and a train would run out behind us on out here onto this spur. And then they would throw the switch and it would go off onto the left as uh, that swings around and goes down Ross Run. And uh, most of the spurs were, they were temporary. They weren't very well done. And a lot of times it's, it's hard to see any, any remnants or signs of them, but like I said, this was a main line was used for about 40 years. <clears throat> so it was, it was well built. And most of this was done by hand, it was dug by hand. They had uh, horse drawn scrapers to level it off, but there's another another section here that's real. Oh, we're going to go to a couple other things back in here to take a look at. You see that up there? That cut that leash road comes down. That was part of the railroad grade, and it continues on down this way. This was uh. Like I said, this was the main line that came up this from uh, on this side. Uh, this is Camp Run over here. It goes into Beaver Run and on down to Endeavor. And uh, like I said, this this was a well a well done railroad grade here. And you'll see these, like I said, you'll see old railroad grades all over the place here. And that's. Uh, and this is on the edge of uh, what's called the Posey Fields, and it's a big uh, flat area. A lot of it's flat, 
not a lot of landmarks. It was kind of, I used to call it the Bermuda Triangle of Forest County because so many guys before GPSs, so many hunters used to get lost back in here. <laughs> and they would end up coming out at our place. It was the first house they saw. It was really funny. They'd come out and say, oh, well, you know, where are we and how do we get back? And you tell them, well, the way you came. And it was fun to tell them that just to see their, just to see their uh, faces drop. But we used, to, we used to give them a ride back usually. We ran a ta pretty good taxi service for a few years, hauling lost hunters back over to Church Hill. But anyhow, this uh, <clears throat> this railroad was built in up this way in uh, I think eight, in the mid 1890s, and it ran until oh uh, sometime in the early to mid 1930s, and by that time the uh, everything had been pretty well cut over, and, and the uh, the railroad was abandoned. This was this was actually called the Hickory Valley Railroad. It was. Uh, connected with the Wheeler-Dusenberry Mill at Endeavor. And uh, they had a mill up at Newtown. They went down to Ross Run and crossed the creek and connected with Teddy Collins' uh, Sheffield Thinesta Railroad. Okay, we're a little further back into the posy fields here, and uh, there's another place back here. There was a there was another farm. This is the last farm back in here, and uh, I don't know. Let me go up here if you can see this. There's this path through the woods that was the uh, the road that went to that farm. And uh, yeah, you can see it there. Trek go, goes quite a ways. Uh, it's really sandy back in here, and they used to uh, at one time. They uh, back in the 1890s, 19, whatever, early 1900s, they they mined sand back here. Um, have never been able to figure out where, you know, or what size you you know much about that operation, but. Uh, Anyhow, uh, but also I've been told that uh, this is prime Bigfoot habitat. And um, there's a guy, a guy, buddy on Facebook, he's telling me that this is that's, Bigfoot is back here. And um, tell you what, bud, I've been looking for him ever since. And you told me that. And I have, I'm thinking Bigfoot don't want to be found because I have not seen him. Uh, and I've been looking hard. Okay, um, anyhow, that other farm was down over that way. Let's go take a look. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is called the Wingard farm. Wingard or Weingard, I'm not, I'm not sure. And, uh, there's a, Spring over here. And uh, used to be a stone cover on this thing, and somebody broke it, you know, no figure. But anyhow, a spring air, and then it runs down into this foundation and comes out um, 
So I mean, you would have would have been had a uh, like a spring light, you know, like this in your basement to keep stuff cool. And there's a uh, there's another foundation here somewhere. Um, but there used to be, you could tell before things grew up so much where the field boundaries were. And they're, they're pretty much overgrown and hard to tell now, but they were open fields back in here. So that is, um, that's the stuff that's in my back, front yard, backyard, whatever you want to call it. Um, so like I said, you don't have to, uh, sometimes you don't have to go very far. And this is all within walking distance of my house. And the spring comes on, uh, down, on down there. And uh, yeah, I still want to find a Bigfoot. I don't know. But anyhow, that's that. I was up to about 20 minutes. I'm surprised. I was afraid I might not have much material for this, but I guess I did. Uh, next week. I don't know, not sure. I got a lot of possibilities. Um, but again, anyhow, again, if you like what you see, um, you know, give us a thumbs up and um, we'll see you, uh, see you next week.